Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this video, we will examine another evidence that Dan Gibson provided to support his theory that Islam started in Petra. He called it the problem of distances. Let's go and watch. So in 683 AD, about 64 years after the founding of Islam, Ibn Zubair declared himself caliph in the holy city, and that started the Second Islamic Civil War. The Umayyads fought against Ibn Zubayr and his companions, but after 40 days, news arrived that the ruling caliph in Damascus had died. Now, the Umayyad generals insisted that the battle wasn't over, but that they must return to Damascus so that a new caliph could be established. The members of the Umayyad royal family had come to the battle as well, and they insisted that they must return to Damascus under the protection of the entire army, so the whole army marches off. The problem we face here is one of timing. The Islamic records are quite clear that when the Caliph died, his 13-year-old son ruled in his place. Al-Tabri, volume 20, tells us specifically that his son survived only 40 days after his father died before he too was killed. During this time, the armies from the Holy City returned to Damascus. Now, a slow-moving army would have taken many days to cover the 1,400-kilometer trek across the desert from Mecca in Saudi Arabia to Damascus in Syria. If the army could move at 20 miles a day, it still would have taken them 43 days. When you add up the time the messenger took to bring the message, the time it took for the army to decide to return and get mobilized, and the 43-day march, there is simply not enough time. Mecca is too far away to be believable. However, if the holy city was Petra, then the distances would all be drastically reduced. This problem of distances plagues Islamic history again and again. Mecca in Saudi Arabia is simply too far removed to fit many of the stories in early Islamic history. Let me try to summarize his argument. While the Umayyads were fighting Ibn Zubayr in Mecca, news came to them that Yazid, the Umayyad Caliph, passed away and that his son Muawiyah ibn Yazid took over. The army decided to return to Damascus. And At-Tabari is specifically saying that the new caliph, Muawiyah ibn Yazid, survived for only 40 days. How could the army have made it from Mecca in Saudi Arabia to Damascus in less than 40 days? First, let's start with what we always do, which is examine the source he provided. The Islamic records are quite clear that when the Caliph died, his 13-year-old son ruled in his place. Al-Tabari, volume 20, tells us specifically that his son survived only 40 days after his father died before he too was killed. Firstly, it is wrong and disingenuous to say that the Islamic records are clear on how long the new Caliph survived after his father passed away. This article is from islamstory.com. And here it's talking about Muawiyah ibn Yazid. In this article, there are so many different opinions on how long he survived. So here it mentions 40 days, and some say 20 days, some say 60 days, and some say 45 days, 90 days, 110 days, and 120 days. So in this article alone, it gives so many different periods. How can you then argue that the Islamic sources are very clear and try to give an impression that this is something which has been agreed upon by all the scholars of Islam? And now, let's stick to the source he mentioned. He mentioned Al-Tabari, volume 20. Al-Tabari, volume 20, tells us specifically that his son survived only 40 days after his father died before he too was killed. Let's go to a tabari book, Tariq al-Tabari, page 364. Here it also gives two different reports. In the first report, it says that he survived for three months. And in the other report, it says he survived for 40 days. Let's listen again to Dan Gibson's claim. Al-Tabari, volume 20, tells us specifically that his son survived only 40 days after his father died before he too was killed. He is trying to deceive his ignorant fans who don't have access to Arabic sources, who won't bother to go and do any fact-checking, who would take him for his word that Al-Tabari is making a certain claim that 
Muawiyah bin Yazid survived for 40 days. When it's actually not, as you see, there are two different reports. One says 40 days and the other says 3 months, 90 days. Now after we expose the deception and lies of Dan Gibson, let's put the final nail in the coffin. What if the 40 days claim was the correct one? Does that mean Dan Gibson argument is valid? If the army could move at 20 miles a day, it still would have taken them 43 days. When you add up the time the messenger took to bring the message, the time it took for the army to decide to return and get mobilized, and the 43-day march, there is simply not enough time. Mecca is too far away to be believable. Well, again, no. It's just a straw man argument. Because nowhere in a tabari report does it say that the army reached Damascus before the caliph dies. Which means even if the new caliph died after 40 days of his father's death, it doesn't mean that the army made it to Damascus before he died. The report just says that the army decided to go back to Damascus because a new caliph was about to be appointed. As I said in the first video of this series, you would realize how ridiculous and stupid this whole theory is. So far, I have made over 10 videos and each one of them proves the desperation Dan Gibson was in to find any evidence, any sort of evidence to support his claim. Yet what he found was evidences and arguments that refutes him and proves him to be a liar, a dishonest person. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.